Okay. So, um, next we are going to discuss about diffraction and then we are going to discuss about uh, interference in more details. So, now what is diffraction? Okay. So, uh, diffraction is the just listen carefully diffraction is the bending of waves or spreading of wave uh, around slits, corners or edges or anything else. Okay? Now, uh, look at this diagram. Okay? Look, uh, from here what you can see is that straight waves are coming, straight waves are coming, but when these waves are passing through this slit or a, uh, uh, or a gap, look the straight waves they are now bent and is now therefore spreading, isn't it? But initially they were traveling in only one direction, but they are now spreading. Okay? So, this incident when the waves uh, after passing through the, through the slits or edges or anything, they begin uh, to bend, this is what we call the diffraction. Okay? Okay, to understand the condition for diffraction, let us look at this graph. Okay, so, first of all, what is A here? A is called the diameter of the slate or the uh, uh, breadth of the slate or the width of the slate, anything you can call it. Okay? So, uh, so, uh, so here in this case, uh, this is A. Okay? This is A. All right. Now, look. Um, now, how is the amount of diffraction measured? So, amount of diffraction can be measured from what we call is the diffraction angle. Okay? For example, wave is traveling in this direction after bending and this was the original direction. So, uh, this would be the diffraction angle theta d. Okay. If more diffraction occurs, then theta d would be more. Okay. The maximum angle of diffraction would be more. Okay. So, look, uh, if the slit uh, diameter is less than the wavelength, then actually no diffraction occurs here. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there is actually no scope of diffraction. Instead, what happens? The incoming wave then reflects back. Okay. Next what happens is that look suddenly the theta d that means the angle of diffraction is the maximum when the slit length is equal to the wavelength. Okay. So, if the slit diameter or slit length or slit breadth or slit width is equal to the wavelength then at that moment the maximum diffraction would occur. But as you increase as you further increase the diameter of the slit, uh, that means the diameter of the slit becomes greater than the wavelength, then amount of diffraction starts to decrease. Okay? Uh, uh, what do I mean is, uh, I am trying to say is this, that uh, for example, if the wavelengths are like this, the, dis uh, the gap is called the wavelength. Okay? Then, um, for example, this is the slit. So, here the amount of, uh, so the extent of diffraction would be like this. Okay? A lot of diffraction is occurring, a lot of bending is occurring. Okay? But if the case is like this, that uh, this is the wavelength. Okay? But this is the slit diameter, is, the slit diameter is much more bigger than the uh, wavelength. So, what would happen is that here in this case, the waves would bend only at the edges okay? and not that much bending would occur. So, that means, look at this graph again, uh, as the wavelength, uh, as the slit diameter continues to increase more and more air from the wavelength, the angle of diffraction starts to decrease. So, maximum diffraction occurs when? when the slit diameter is equal to the wavelength. Okay? So, this is the uh, diffraction through one slits. 
Now, we will carry on the uh, diffraction through two slits, which we call as the Young's double slit experiment. Okay? There is the diffraction through the two slits. Okay? Okay. Okay, so here we have two slits. Now, what happens is that, please write a note first, I am telling. Uh, when two coherent waves pass through the two slits, uh, if the waves have the same frequency and amplitude, Then after diffraction through the slits, at a certain distance away from the slits, at a certain distance like this, at a certain distance away from the slit, the waves will meet on a, um, uh, on a certain template which may be a screen or which may be a detector somewhere in phase and somewhere in antiphase. Now, this incident is what we call the interference in the double slit experiment and we call it the Young's double slit experiment. All right, We call it the Young's double slit experiment. Now, let us look at the quantity in the Young's double slit experiment. Okay, So, this is what we are calling it as the A here. So, A is the distance between the so a here let me zoom it so a here is the distance between the two slits okay from the middle of okay so from the middle of this slit uh, to the middle of this slit this can be a or you can say that uh, no sir i'm going to take from the top okay so from the top of this slit to the, the top of this slit this is also a if you say that no, I'm going to take from the bottom, okay. So from the bottom of this slit to the bottom of this slit, all these distances are A. So A is the distance between the two slits, okay. And uh, lambda is the wavelength of the wave, all right, okay. Uh, okay, so here we have meeting points, meeting points, meeting points. Imagine that these are the points where the waves met in phase. So, if this is light or if these are the light waves, then the these meeting points since they meet in same phase, so it will bright, bright, bright and bright. Okay, All these points are bright and all the points between the brights, they are the dark, dark, okay, dark, okay. So, uh, distance between the two bright points is what we call the fringe. Uh, these bright points, bright points, we also call them bright fringe, and these dark points, we also call them dark fringe. So, why they are dark? Because the waves here they meet in antiphase, okay, based on their path difference. So the distance between two adjacent bright fringe is called the fringe separation, as well as the distance between two edges in dark fringe is called is also called the fringe separation. Whatever it is, the fringe separation in all cases will remain the same. Okay. So we have the uh, slit distance or the slit separation A. We have the fringe separation. Now the distance between the slit and the screen is what we call the capital G. Okay. Now uh, the formula for uh, a formula for relating all these terms like uh, a lambda d and x the formula are uh, okay so a into x equals to lambda into d that means slit separation into fringe separation equals to wavelength into distance that means the product is so easy to remember. That means the product of separation equals to lambda d. Okay, the product of separation is equal to lambda d. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so the product of separation that means slit separation, the free separation, which is a and x. So a into x equals to lambda into d. Okay. So um, we have different questions for that relates to Young's double slit experiment. Uh, we will relate these questions later, but you must remember that uh, a x equals to lambda d. The fourth quantity is that affect this experiment are the slit separation, not the diameter of the slit. Okay, the diameter of the slit is not present here. We have the slit separation, the fringe separation, the wavelength, and the distance between the slit and the screen. So these are the four terms that affect the experiment. Okay. Now let us look at a system that contains thousands of slits. Okay, the thousands of slits. Now what do I refer to when I say thousands of slits? Okay. Uh, okay, for example, consider this case and this piece of equipment is what we call the diffraction grating. Now how does a diffraction grating look like? Okay, let us see. Okay, so diffraction grating is simply a piece of glass, a piece of plastic transparent glass that consists of thousands of opaque lines drawn into it. Okay, and these lines are very small to be seen through naked eyes. Okay. Okay, so thousands of lines are drawn through the slits. Okay, uh, so these uh, so these lines the sorry, so these lines they are actually um, opaque lines. So these lines are the opaque lines. Okay, so light cannot pass through these lines. Light won't pass through these lines. Instead, between the two between these two opaque lines we have a gap isn't it we have a gap over here and this gap would allow light to pass through okay oops sorry so this gap would allow light to pass through all right okay so this gap is a slit that means between two opaque lines, we have a gap which is the slit. So, this is one slit, okay. This is another slit, uh, this is another slit, okay. So, this is another slit. So, between two opaque lines, we have a gap which is called the slit, and we have a quantity here that means the distance between the two slits is the d, or we can say the distance between the two lines is the d, okay. So, this system, uh, this, uh, this system is actually, it looks like this over here. Look, here you can, uh, here uh, you can barely see any slit, right? Okay, but when you zoom it, you see it, it consists of many slits, okay? Okay, but actually the practical is also like this like uh, this thing uh, looks like this a, like a simply a piece of glass but when you zoom it you will find that this consists of many slits okay and the distance d okay so um, so this system consists of thousands of slits with uh, distance d is the distance between the two slits or two lines Okay, so this line or uh, this line of wave uh, didn't actually bend, so we are calling it as n is no. Okay, so these are all the bright points. Okay, the bright points means here the waves meet in same phase, and so for the same phase, just rem uh, remember that when the waves meet in same phase, then the distance. Uh, then the path difference is like uh, n lambda, isn't it? Where n is the uh, integer number. And um, 
So, here the path difference is n lambda for waves meeting in same phase and for antiphase or antiphase we had 2 n plus 1 lambda by 2 is not it. Okay. If you do not uh, understand these things please look at my first video on wave. Okay. Okay. So, this is the angle of diffraction, this is the angle of diffraction, angle of diffraction, angle of diffraction. Okay. So, when n is equal to 0 that means the path difference is actually 0 uh, for the waves in the middle we call it 0 order. Here uh, n will be equal to 1 that means the path difference uh, okay. here n will be equal to 0 here n will be equal to 1 that means the path difference is 1 lambda here n will be equal to 2 that means the path difference is 2 lambda okay so, uh, here also n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 okay so the values of n tells you the order or gives you the order so this is the zero order of wavelength zero uh, order actually is the coefficient of uh, wavelength in the path difference. So, this is the first order, this is the second order, this is the first order, this is the second order and angle of angle of diffraction has always to be taken from the zero order. Okay? If this is the first order, this is the zero order, then this is the angle of diffraction of the first order, we are calling it as theta 1. Okay? And if this is the second order n equals to 2, then if you take the angle from the zero order, so, this will be called as theta 2. Okay? And what is the formula over here? The formula is d sin theta n where theta, uh, where theta n is the angle of uh, diffraction will be equal to path difference which is the n lambda. This is for the bright points and for the dark points the formula would be and for the dark points the formula would be d sin theta n would be equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Okay? So, d sin theta n is actually the path difference. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. So, this is the diffraction grating and we have some more quantities of diffraction grating over here. Now, let us go into this diagram again. Okay. Consider this is the length of the diffraction grating. Okay. And so, uh, uh, we have a quantity is that uh, how many lines or how many opaque lines are present there in one unit of the uh, in one unit length of the diffraction grating. Okay. Let n equals to number of lines number of lines per uh, meter for example number of opaque lines per meter okay then there is a relation between the slit the slit separation the slit separation d and n where d equals to 1 by n that means the distance uh, that means the distance between the uh, what you say uh, that means the distance between um, two slits or uh, distance between two lines will be the reciprocal of 1 by n where n is the number of opaque lines per, per meter or per unit length on the diffraction grating. Okay? Okay. Now, just uh, for revision again, the angle of diffraction has to be taken from the center that means from the zero order line. All right, and okay. So what you are going to do next is to find the maximum diffraction angle, or uh, the maximum possible order. Like here is n equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five. So how many possible order, or what is the maximum possible order that you are going to get? So the formula for maximum possible order is uh, d equals to n lambda putting sin theta is equal to 1. So, why sin theta equals to 1? Because at the maximum order, the angle of diffraction would be 90 degree. 
So, putting theta equals to 90, sin 90 would give you 1 and you will opt in the formula d will be equal to n lambda where n is the maximum possible order. Okay? So, uh, that is the diffraction grating through thousands of slits. Okay. Now, the end density of the wave, the, this relationship is very, very important. Okay. So, the intensity is defined as the energy transferred by a wave per unit area per unit time. Okay. So, uh, this is, uh, please memorize the definition of intensity. This is the formula for intensity. Now, we will look at uh, various relations of intensity with various quantities. Okay. Here, this is the area, but here, this is not the area. Remember, this is the amplitude of uh, maybe some typing mistakes. Okay. So, all this formula, it relates with the changes in the intensities. Okay. Now, in this case, the first formula uh, tells like, um, okay, look. The first formula tells you that intensity, no, 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 that um, intensity will be proportional to amplitude square, okay. And this further tells you that intensity by amplitude square will be a constant, okay. So, uh, or you can also tell that intensity 1 by amplitude square 1 will be equal to intensity 2 by amplitude square 2. Okay? So, uh, uh, this is how you can evaluate the formula. Like if for example, one intensity, uh, for example, one intensity is given and one amplitude is given and another amplitude is given, then you have to find the intensity. Okay? So, you can easily find this formula to find the intensity. Okay. We will look, go for the shortcuts later. Now, uh, here we have look as the second formula that intensity is proportional to frequency square, is not it? So, intensity is proportional to frequency square. That means, just like amplitude, what we have is that, sorry, what we have is that intensity uh, divided by frequency square will be equal to constant. So, we can say that intensity 1 by frequency 1 square equals to intensity, intensity 2 by frequency 2 square. Okay? Again, in this case, for example, if you are given one quantity and if you have one frequency and if you know another frequency, then you can easily find another intensity okay? or uh, anything what you need. Okay. Our third formula or third relation for intensity is intensity is inversely proportional to the distance square. Okay? So, let me discuss it over here. So, intensity is inversely proportional to distance square on cross multiplication what you would get is that uh, intensity into distance square equals to constant. Okay? So, intensity 1 into distance 1 square is equal to intensity 2 into distance 2 square. Okay? So, this is the third formula for uh, in, uh, intensity measurements. Okay? But uh, I think we better also look at some shortcuts to find or to evaluate this formula. Okay, let me tell you. Okay, so um, intensity is proportional to amplitude square, or you can say that changes in intensity will be equal to changes in amplitude square. If you, if you want to write equal directly, then you have to put the changes. Okay? Like uh, what you would say, let me show you an example, just keep this in mind. Okay? For example, uh, intensity initially 
this is the intensity, this is uh, the amplitude. Okay. So, the initial value of intensity was 2 and amplitude was 3, but right now amplitude is uh, 9. So, what is the new intensity? Okay. So, let us use our uh, formula learned. Okay. So, we can say So, we can say that intensity 1 by amplitude 1 square will be equal to intensity 2 by amplitude 2 square. Okay? So, intensity the first intensity uh, given here is 2 and the amplitude is 3 and the second amplitude is 9. So, the second intensity is unknown. Okay? So, you can put the value of x. So, value of x would be um, 2 by 9 into 81. So, x would be equal to 18. Okay? So, the second intensity over here, it, uh, this has the value of 18. Okay? Now, uh, we have applied the proportional relation. Now, let us apply the direct relation, the relation of the changes. Okay? So, um, let us take it over here. So, we have to find the changes in the intensity. So, intensity is proportional to amplitude square. That means, changes in intensity will be equal to changes in amplitude square. Okay? So, what is the change in the amplitude? Tell me from 3 to 9. So, change in amplitude is how many times? Is 9 by 3, that means 3 times. So, change in intensity would be 3 square times, that means 9 times. Okay? So, now tell me what is the initial intensity 2? Initial intensity is 2 and how many times it will be changed? 9 times. So, intensity would be equal to initial intensity into changes is equal to 18. Look, they gave you the same result. Okay? Similarly, uh, you can also say that changes in intensity will be equal to changes in frequency square. All right? And you can also say changes in intensity will be equal to 1 by changes in distance square. Okay? Or you can also do it reverse like changes in frequency will be equal to root over changes in intensity. Uh, changes in amplitude will be equal to root over changes in intensity or changes in distance will be equal to root over 1 by changes in intensity. Okay? So, that is the considerations of intensity and what we have, uh, we have learned uh, so intensity relations diffraction grating, conditions for diffraction, then Doppler effect, okay? then we have learned about re resonance and I think that is the end of our wave of S level. Okay, Guys, if you find any content missing, please inform uh, after going to the uh, uh, syllabus of uh, Cambridge International or PRC at Excel, please inform me in the comment section that if any of the content is missing and if you do need the worksheet, Please knock me in the WhatsApp, and my WhatsApp number is plus eight eight zero one seven four nine three three nine. Okay, oh six, six nine zero. Huh. Plus eight eight zero one seven four nine three three nine six nine zero. Okay, guys. Goodbye.